Hello everyone, this is part 4 on how to make a shooter game in Scratch. In this video, I will be mostly focusing on adding to the in-game shop so the player can purchase upgrades and new weapons. If you haven't seen parts 1, 2, or 3 of this series, make sure to check them out. I put the links in the description below. Anyways, we have the shop here and it's pretty blank. I was thinking of adding different guns and upgrades you can buy for each gun. So I'll create a new sprite and I will put the names of the guns I want. So I'll just write out pistol right here. Oops. Me typing the P made the game on pause, so yeah. Anyways, um, I'll just add a box around it like this. Actually a bit larger. And I'll add a white background, I think. So yeah, I was thinking of having the name of the gun and then having the upgrades below it and there would be arrows on both sides so you can switch to different guns. So I'll just make this sprite show and I actually think I'll change this a bit so yeah just one second. Alright, so now I think we're good, and now that I have this banner thing ready, I'll just start making the upgrades. So I was thinking of making squares, and when you hover over it, you can see the name and like the upgrade and stuff, so I'll just make that. I'll make the sprite for one individual upgrade, so I'll just create a square. Alright, and I think I'm done. This is going to be the faster firing upgrade for my pistol. And I just finished the icon. So, now when I hover over it, I want some text appear on the bottom right here. Like the cost and the description. So, I will create a new sprite. This is going to be the description for the icon. And I will just create a banner. Well, actually, I'll just copy this over, so... I'll just add this here and adjust it a bit like I'll just put it in the middle here and then I'll just change this a bit so yeah now I'll write the description so I'll just say um, faster firing speed Alright, oops, I just pressed F again. Speed. I meant P, sorry. Speed. I'll just shrink this down a little. Like this. And, yep. Alright, now I'll add the cost. I'll just say like cost, um, uh, 50. I'll just put this in here on the same line. Actually, I'll just add on to this one. So, yeah, cost 50. Yeah, so let me see how it looks. I'm going to press P. And I put this on the front. Okay, I'll actually might put this on two separate lines. I'll just see how that looks. Like this, and then put this in the middle. Um, yeah. Alright, so I redid the shop a little, and it looks like this. 
with these stuffs in the front like this. So now I want these to appear with the shop when I press P. So I'll just add a when I receive show, then um, repeat 24 times, which is the amount it repeats in the shop. So repeat 24, and then go to motion, grab a go to, and then go to sensing, grab a X position, and then change that to sprite 6, and duplicate this, and then Y position of sprite 6, and add or subtract based on your desired position. So in my case, mine would be add, uh, let's say, 22 in the Y position. So let me just test that. And I'll also add a go to front. So yeah, let me just test that. And that seems pretty good. And I think I'll just take out this go to x0, y, negative 32. I think it runs more smoothly, so yeah. Now I'll do the same with my other two sprites. So for this one, I'll just like copy and paste and do this right here. So, and I think uh, minus 16 in the Y position. So yeah, let me see. Okay, uh, 24, I think. Yeah, and about like 26. All right, good. Now with the description. So I'll just copy and paste again. And x minus 22. And y minus like 70, I think. Okay, uh, minus 72. So now I want them to hide until they actually appear on the screen. So I'll first add a when flag clicked, then hide. I'll do the same with the other two. And also if their Y position is um, less than negative 180, uh, Y position, then they hide else they show. So let me just add that to the other two, and I'll see how it goes. Um, there's this one line. I think it's for the faster firing speed description thing. So I'll just make this number lower, like negative 190. Let me just try that. Okay, um, negative 220. Um... Okay, the Y position should be higher, so less than, let's say, negative 170. Okay, that works pretty well. So yeah, now we have the complete shop animation when you press pause. So now we need to do the same thing when we close the shop. See, if we open the shop, then this works pretty fine, but when we close it, then it doesn't really work. So when the shop closes, then these things need to go down with it too. So I'll just go to here and then grab when I receive hide, then just copy this over. And I'll drag this to the other two and then yeah. Actually, I'll just duplicate this. So, um, yeah. Now let's run it again. So it works when we press P, and then when we press P again, then these go down, but not really. Oh yeah, change the show to hide. I forgot about that. So now it should work. Press P and then press P again. These go down. Cool. So now that we have that, let's make this description right here only show when I hover over the icon, which is this one. So I'll be first making this a clone because I'm going to use multiple of the same sprite but different costumes of this. So I will just create a clone of myself and then drag uh, when I start as a clone and also hide. So let me just try something for one second. Let me just see if this works. So set ghost effect to 100 and then ghost effect 0 and 
Okay. And let me see. Um, so like this. Okay, cool. So what I did was that I hid the original sprite and made it invisible because I'm only going to use its clones. And for my clones, I made it visible by setting the ghost effect to zero. So the reason that I made the original sprite also invisible was because in this broadcast here, it affects the original sprite and its clones. So if I were to run this with this block outside, then there would be the original sprite and the clone, which is not really that big of a problem because they're directly on top of each other, but it's for like just in case, so yeah. So now we want to see if the mouse pointer is touching the icon. Technically, if there was only one icon, then we could just use uh, if touching mouse pointer. However, since we will have multiple clones of this, but in different costumes, we can tell if the mouse pointer is touching it, but we can't tell if the mouse pointer is not touching it. But there is an alternate way. So go to control, grab a forever loop, and grab an if else statement. Go to operators, grab an and, and grab a greater than or lesser than based on your x position and y position. So we want to detect if the mouse is in a range of two certain x positions and two certain y positions. So I will just hover my mouse at the edge of the left side of the icon, and that is x negative 114. I said right here. So if x position is greater than negative 115 because greater than, so you have to subtract one because it's not greater or equal than. And I'll hover my mouse over here. If x is less than negative 61, so x position is less than negative 61. And now we need to do the y position too. So grab another and statement. Grab a greater than and lesser than. And let's see, y is lesser than negative 20. So if y position is less than negative 20, and y position is greater than negative 76. Negative 76, okay. And grab one more and, and then put these two together and put it back to the if-else statement. Oh yeah, one big mistake, sorry guys. Um, actually, it's exposition of the mouse, which is, oh yeah, mouse x. It's not exposition, sorry, I got that mixed up. It's mouse x and mouse y. So let me just replace that. So it checks if the mouse is in between these four values, which surrounds the edges of this icon. So now uh, go to data. And then create a new variable. I'll just call it description. And then set it to all sprites. Oops. And let's say set description to 1. And then let's set description to 0 in the else of the if else statement. So now uh, go to your description, which is this thing right here. And then let's grab a forever loop and then put it after the repeat 25 in the show. And let's switch costume to description. So let's go to its costume, and then copy this current costume, and then let's name the first one uh, 0, and the second one 1, and I am going to delete the text from the costume named 0, so yeah. Now I'm going to go back, and let's try. So press P, I'll, and then I'll hover over this, and it's not working. Hmm. Let me see. Okay, this is supposed to work. Um, let me see. Mouse x greater than, less than, mouse y greater than, less than. And description is 1 and 0. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a space after the 0, so that's important. And, yeah, I just delete that. Now let's try again. So when we press P... There is no description until we hover our mouse pointer over the icon. So it's like this. And I just want to go to the description for one second. And just switch costume to zero when it shows. And let's try it again. So press P. And there's our description. 
So yeah, that is going to be the end of this video. I did a lot of stuff artistically wise in this video, but I can finish the upgrades for the pistol and make the player actually be able to upgrade and make the player be able to buy the upgrades. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe too. Anyways, that's it. See ya.